These mini PC manufacturers are getting pretty crazy, but when it comes to the Orion 1 Pro, this thing is putting down some absolutely amazing AAA gaming performance. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a mini PC that's going to be hitting the market really soon. I believe they're going to have an Indiegogo launching for this thing. It's from a company known as Hurt, relatively new to the mini PC market. And this is known as the Orion One Pro. We've got a full aluminum exterior, an RDNA 3 based Zen 4 APU, which puts down some amazing performance. And they are offering this in a few different color options. Obviously, we've got the orange variant here. So this is the Orion One Pro, but they're also going to be offering some lower end variants. In this video, we've got a lot to go over. But before we get into it, I do want to mention that. This video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84. But if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. They'll email your code once your payment is processed. And that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. Personally, I think this orange actually looks really good. You don't really see this in many PCs. And the fact that we've got a full aluminum chassis here really does add to the overall build quality of this mini PC. The way it looks right now, their lineup is going to consist of four different models. We've got the Pro, which is the one we're taking a look at, the MX, the SR, and the LT. They've also got the extra color variants, green, blue, black, red, and of course, we've got the orange one here. I'm pretty sure they're going to be offering all of these models with extras that you can actually add on in the purchase. But with this here, we got that carrying case, the Orion One Pro Mini PC, really nice HDMI cable, and a 120 watt power supply. Taking a look at the I.O. of the Orion One, up front here we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, USB-C, and this is USB-C 3.2. Plus we've got two extra USB 3.2 ports and a single USB 2.0 port. Not much at all going on around each side, but around back, we do have another USB-C port, and this one is USB 4. Full-size display port, full-size HDMI, dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, two more full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, and of course, we've got our power in. So all in all, we can actually do four displays out of this mini PC, utilizing HDMI, display port, USB 4 around back, and that USB-C up front. I definitely wanted to give you a look at the internals here. And again, this is constructed of aluminum. We've got a little bit of ventilation on the bottom here, but this isn't going to cool the CPU. We've actually got a cooling system built in for the RAM and the M.2 SSDs. We can actually add two PCIe 4.0 M.2 2280 SSDs in this unit. And it looks like this came pre-installed with a one terabyte NVMe SSD. And we've also got dual channel SODIMM RAM. This utilizes DDR5. It's Samsung RAM right now, and I'm not sure what they're going to be using in the final production units, but this is running at 5600 megatransfers per second. And when it comes to the overall specs of the Pro model, for the APU, we've got the AMD Ryzen 9 7948HS. It's based on Zen 4. We've got 8 cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 4 GHz, and a max boost up to 5.2. This is paired up with that Radeon 780M iGPU based on RDNA 3. We've got 12 compute units, and this runs at up to 2800 MHz, given that we have an HS variant here. You can add up to 64 gigabytes of DDR5 at 5600, two PCIe 4.0 M.2 slots, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and this is running Windows 11 out of the box, but you could always install Linux on this machine. In fact, they do advertise Windows and Ubuntu. So I've been doing some testing so far, and yeah, this little PC is quick, and it really comes down to that 7948HS. We've also got that 32 gigs of 5600 in dual channel, and the Radeon 780M iGPU. This does clock up to 2800 megahertz because we do have that HS variant, so we can get a little more out of this. And when it comes to the TDP, I mean, we're getting basically the most we can get out of the 7948HS. Uh, real quick, 
we've got CPU-Z right here. I'm gonna run a stress test. Down here, we've got our wattage. This jumps up to around 87 watts just on the CPU, clocked up to five gigahertz on all eight of those cores. Of course, we need to add a little bit of GPU into the mix. Right there at 90 watts, which is pretty crazy. And to tell you the truth, I don't know if the final version is gonna be running at 90 watts, but even now, usually, I mean, with a mini PC like this, we'd already be hitting thermal throttle. Now, of course, we could definitely get up there, but this is some really awesome wattage for this little APU. And it's really gonna give us, you know, the maximum clocks on the CPU and GPU while we're gaming on this thing. The first thing I wanted to show off here were some benchmarks. And since we're working with such a high wattage, this is one of the best performers that I've seen with that 7940HS. Geekbench 6, single core 2637, multi 13,636. I mean, this is phenomenal for a mobile chip. Next up, we've got some GPU benchmarks using 3D Mark. Night Raid 29,302. Fire Strike, I was really hoping we could break 8,000 with it, but we're right there at 7,904. And finally, we've got Time Spy with a 3,416. The highest score I've ever been able to get out of the 7940HS is around 3,300, so this is coming in at the top of my list, but I'm gonna chalk a lot of this up to newer AMD drivers. And it would be nice to be over 4,000 with an iGPU. In the future, I'm sure we're gonna get way higher than that. But this is a really awesome score for integrated graphics. I mean, this is looking really awesome. But these are all synthetics, and now it's time to check out some real-world gaming. And we're gonna jump right into Starfield. If you're familiar with this game, you know it runs like crud on a lot of different systems, especially with integrated graphics. Right now, we're at 720p low in the city, not looking great, but I mean, it's still playable like this. Now, of course, the city areas in Starfield are the hardest on your PC. So in open world exploration, we can actually get an average of around 58 FPS. Here's Spider-Man Miles Morales 1080p low settings. We do get those dips under 60. And right now I've got V-Sync on. This is connected to a 120 Hertz display. For the most part, we're over 60 FPS. By the end, we had an average of 62, but yeah, I mean, it is dipping under, and that's just really how it is with this game on a lot of these iGPUs. It's kind of a hit or miss situation with this one. Mortal Kombat 1 did have to drop this down to 900p, low settings, but we can run this at 60. At 1080, low settings, we're right there at around 53. Taking FSR to ultra performance would definitely help that out at 1080, but I still think it looks a lot better at 900 the way I've got it set up. And yeah, I mean, it's playable. This is a really good experience on this iGPU. Hey! Here's the built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and going into this, I was pretty sure we'd be able to do this at 900p low settings with no issues, but unfortunately, by the end, we only had an average of 51 FPS. So with this one, we could take it down to the lowest or go down to 720. Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, medium settings. I was hoping that we could do 120 here at medium. And at low settings, we can actually do a steady 120 FPS with this little setup here. But I took it up to medium just to see what we could get, and we're so close. Definitely well over 60. We had an average of 111 FPS. And finally, we've got Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p, low, and from the settings, you take everything down below, not just the preset. We got an average of 74 FPS, and you'll see it kind of all over the place here. In some situations, we were actually over 100, and that's indoor gameplay, but open world exploration, around 74. Now again, with the Orion 1 Pro, I'm not exactly sure what the final TDP is going to be set at. This is a production unit. It's actually a prototype that they were able to send over to me. But I do like checking out total system power consumption just to give you an idea. Through all of my testing, I have this plugged into a kilowatt meter. And at idle, this is around 16 watts from the wall. Average gaming it jumps up to 86 watts. And the maximum that I got this to pull was 128. Remember, we've got a 120 watt power supply that came included with this. So it is going a bit over that, 
but I don't think that it's going to be set up like this from the factory. I believe the TDP on this is going to be around 65, maybe with a little bit of boost. But given that this is a newer mini PC manufacturer on the market, I think that this thing is performing absolutely amazingly. Seeing some awesome performance out of the 7940HS. They're also going to be offering one with the 7840HS, and they've also got a couple with the 7735HS. Remember that 7735 has RDNA 2 graphics, so if you really want the most out of these, make sure you get one with the 78 or the 79. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look video. If you're interested in learning a little more, maybe even backing the Indiegogo, I'll leave a link in the description. And if I can get my hands on the one with that 7840HS, I will be making another video. If you've got any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.